This week finally sees the release of The Last Guardian, a game that's been in development hell for the past 10 years. The sheer fact that it's finally here, and along with Final Fantasy XV to boot, is a surreal joy and got us thinking about all the poor films still stuck in development limbo. From mega sequels Avatar 2 and Sherlock Holmes 3, to fan requested fare like Hellboy 3 and Dread 2, there are a ton of films that just can't make it to our screens. But for our money, these are the five movies that we'll probably never see. Five. I'll stay. I suggest you hit, sir. I also like to live dangerously. Back in the late 90s and early 2000s, your dad likely had one really good impression. Sure, he had a backup Sean Connery, but he'd save his magnum opus for truly special occasions. Your mum would egg him on, and then after a few session ales, he'd stand up and let rip. Do I make you horny, baby? Do I? Do I make you randy? Yeah. After three uber-successful movies and hundreds of thousands of embarrassed children the world over, you'd think that we would have seen more from the international man of mystery. But alas, since 2002's gold member, the groovy penis pump enthusiast has been uncharacteristically quiet. HBO purchased the rights to make an Austin Powers cartoon series back in 1999, but that never amounted to anything. I mean, we did get Archer, so I doubt we'll ever see a Powers cartoon come to fruition. Just Seriously, Lana, call Kenny Loggins, because you're in the danger zone. <sighs> And since 2008's bomb, The Love Guru, oh yes, remember that one, Mike Myers hasn't really been starring in all that much, barring a cameo in Inglorious Bar Stewards and another Shrek. No, get away from it! Of course. Although, things look to all be ogre for the jolly green giant. It seems to be only living on in memes. Shrek is love, Shrek is life. Back in 2007, Myers said that he had an idea for the fourth movie, and that the story would be told from Dr. Evil's point of view. In 2008, he said that he was writing it, and rumours began to circulate that it would be called For Your Thighs Only. Nice. When pressed earlier this year, Myers revealed that everything is being negotiated and worked out and all that stuff. And here's a never-before-seen photo of Mike Myers as he was answering that question. Ever since we saw Master Chief saunter off that pelican and onto our screens, we knew he was destined for big things. And since the success of the first game, Microsoft have been pushing for a movie. But seeing as the film has languished within development hell for the best part of a decade, it's not looking likely that we'll see our favourite Spartan on the big screen anytime soon. Alex Garland wrote the first draft of the movie way back in 2006, which was pitched to studios by Microsoft sending couriers actually dressed as the Chief himself to the movie offices. Microsoft staked $10 million and wanted 50% of the profits as well as casting choices and first-class plane tickets to the movie premiere. How about new, you crazy Dutch bastard? As you might be able to guess, many studios passed up on the offer due to the daft demands and a lack of creative control. But 20th Century Fox and Universal Studios eventually joined forces to get the production started. Names like Peter Jackson and Guillermo del Toro were tossed around to start working on the movie. But to cut down on costs, the studios went with a young but talented Neil Blomkamp. DB Vice, yes, the Game of Thrones DB Vice, even lent a hand in rewriting the script in 2006. Eventually, Blomkamp declared the film was dead in 2007, and dreams of a big screen chief went up in smoke as the rights returned to Microsoft. But it's not all bad news. After Blomkamp was freed from movie stasis, he was able to go and work on the fantastic District 9. And to be honest, I'd rather see a District 10 than a Halo movie at this point. Just let the big green spot and rest. Mr. Sandman, bring me a dream. Sandman is one of the most revered comic book properties of all time, so it's no surprise that Hollywood has been dreaming of adapting it for the small and big screen. But dreams are the realm of Morpheus, and he's having none of it. Despite his best efforts, attempts to adapt Sandman have repeatedly failed, 
Warner Brothers initially put Sandman into development in the 1990s with Pulp Fiction co-writer Roger Avery attached, and apparently he absolutely shit the bed. Neil Gaiman later described it as quite easily the worst script he'd ever read. That was strike one, and with the movie hitting a brick wall, Warner Brothers decided to take a second crack at Sandman, but this time as a TV show. For this, Warner Brothers tapped Eric Kripke, the creator of Supernatural, which I maintain had an excellent first few seasons and is well worth watching if you're into handsome fellas hunting demons and occasionally doing some stellar lip syncing work. According to Kripke, this was for a lot of varying reasons that were nobody's fault. Don't lie to me, Kripke. Someone's always at fault. Probably you. The most recent attempt was probably the closest it ever came, thanks in part to the high profile names attached to the project. Joseph Gordon Levitt, a vocal fan of the Sandman, signed on to play Morpheus as well as produce and direct it. Neil Gaiman even joined the project as executive producer. But alas, it wasn't meant to be, and Joseph Gordon left the movie citing creative differences with Warner Brothers, who shifted custody of all DC Vertigo adaptations to New Line. The Sandman movie hasn't outright been cancelled, but it's difficult to imagine a future where it actually exists. As anyone that's read the comic can attest to, it's a story that's inextricably linked to the medium it was originally told in. Perhaps the Sandman was only ever meant to be a comic, and anything more is just a failed dream. certainly been no shortage of Stephen King book to movie adaptations. But there's still a few languishing around in development hell. The Dark Tower recently escaped after almost 10 years, with the help of the world's worst EW front cover. But the one I'm lamenting the most is The Stand. Back in the 80s, King wanted horror maestro George A. Romero to direct a movie working from his screenplay. But due to the novel's immense length of a thousand plus pages, cutting it down to fit into a two and a half hour flick proved difficult. TV networks thought that a show based on a book where 99.4% of the world's population choke on their own phlegm and die was a bit too dark, but King worked his magic and got a miniseries on ABC in 1995. King, who was presumably still reeling from Kubrick's version of The Shining, which he famously hated, decided that he would write the screenplay himself. Despite King helming the writing and having a pretty stellar cast, the result was a rambling miniseries that glossed over the harsher elements of King's magnum opus. But then in 2011, Warner Brothers decided that they were interested in creating a full-length movie of The Stand, which then turned into a trilogy, which then turned into a multi-film project, which then turned into a TV miniseries, which then turned into a single three-hour long movie, and then maybe would be four feature-length movies. Various directors and screenwriters were attached, including Batfleck before he left to uh, become Batfleck. The one that stuck was Josh Boone, director of The Fault in Our Stars, who talked openly about the project before abandoning it to go work on another Stephen King adaptation revival. Maybe we just shouldn't get our hopes up for this one, okay? Okay. Hollywood has an absolutely atrocious track record of handling anime and manga, so the idea of it adapting Katsuhiro Otomo's groundbreaking Akira is frankly worrying. Now I'm not saying that it can't be done successfully, but the business of making movies successful worldwide is a huge stumbling block for Akira, an indelibly Japanese sci-fi story. Although nothing has been officially revealed about the Akira adaptation, rumours have been rattling around the internet for a while now and they've upset a whole bunch of people. Not the least of which is Star Trek actor George Takei, who responded to reports that the movie was being whitewashed by starting a petition. Because that always works! Rumours indicated that the list of actors being considered for the roles of Tetsuo! 
and in Canada. include sparkling vampire Robert Pattinson, mediocre Spider-Man Andrew Garfield, Charles Xavier with hair James McAvoy, Tron dude Garrett Hedlund, Michael Fassassin Bender, Crapkin Kirk Chris Pine, Justin Trouser Snake, and Joaquin Phoenix's whole face. <laughs> As shown by the Ghost in the Shell adaptation, which stars Scarlett Johansson as Japanese protagonist Major Makoto Kusanagi, Hollywood believes it needs A-listers to give niche properties a fighting chance at the box office. And the unfortunate reality is that it's just not in the habit of casting Asian actors in leading roles or finding more suitable unknowns. If you need proof, let's look at Goku from the Dragon Ball movie. That's gotta hurt. Casting alone could be enough of a barrier to getting Akira off the ground, but there's also the matter of the source material being a complex exploration of society affected by a nuclear attack. Otomo drew from Japan's own history with Hiroshima and Nagasaki to depict his post-apocalyptic world and the characters within it. Maybe I'm just being cynical, but I think without a personal connection and Hollywood's fat cats calling the shots, we're more likely to get something like YouTube user Harry Partridge's American Akira. No time to talk, guys! Evil scientists and wrinkly children in flying chairs are holding our friend Tetsuo captive and performing experiments on him! And the prom's tomorrow! Nevertheless, the Akira movie is reportedly in production, with a reworked script from Harry Potter movie scribe Steve Cloves and Fast and Furious 6 director Justin Lin being courted to helmet. The Akira movie adaptation has a lot of big hurdles to clear before it can be made. And you know what? I would be totally okay if it fell flat on its face. So unfortunately, those are the five movies that we'll probably never see. If there are any films that you've got a hankering for, let us know in the comment section below. And for more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to GameSpot.